Thanks for the standing ovation. Sorry, I'm the only one that gets that. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank the UN Foundation. I have to tell you, it's been two years <laughs> to find the time to receive this award. Well, I think that when I'm needed somewhere to bring a set of new eyes and to listen, to help, I always will answer those calls before an award ceremony. I can't stand before you tonight without telling you the story of how it started for me to be here. I was raised in a family of 10 children, seven brothers and three girls. I was number seven. I have three brothers after me that tried to rule my life, and I, and I, I show them how they can't. And growing up, one of my vivid memory, and still I'm traumatized by it, is the UNICEF vaccination bosses. I hate those. But my mom was a freak of health. Because my 10 children with one paycheck demand a different mindset to keep your children safe. And because my parents didn't have the amount of money that it takes to give us all the vaccination we needed, my mom made sure to understand when is the truck is coming. She has a little book and go, okay, they're coming these days. She knew more the schedule of UNICEF vaccination than anybody else in the city. And every time that truck comes in, I can see it from far, watch me, I run away. <laughs> she always finds me, and I get to school the next day, they go, here comes the latest white girl that with a vaccination. I'm like, just leave me alone, I didn't want to be vaccinated. But my mom said, I don't care. My job is to make sure that you are safe. If there's a possibility for me to save your life through vaccination, I don't care what anybody said to you, just sit on it you're going to be safe. The one that I'm making fun out of you, they might get sick. But you won't. Today I'm receiving this award. But I could not have done this without the support of my mother and my father. There were two people in one. My father is the most feminist man I've ever known on this planet. He always used to say to the family at large when they're asking him, Frank, why are you sending a girl to school and you lead, letting your wife do in theater? My father said, don't tell me what I got to do in my house. I don't tell you what you got to do in your house. So he produced my first concert when his friend promoter said to him two weeks before the show, Frank, you know what? Your daughter is too little. Nobody's going to see her on stage. And my father said, you, sound, you hear your, yourself sounding stupid? I prove to you. So I'm here before you tonight because of that support that I have every time that I reach out to my father. One of the things that I learned also is their dedication to education. Both of my parents, which is a very rare thing in Africa, were single kids. And they will go beyond any means to send all of us to school and beyond to send other people's children to school. Because my father always used to say to us, the world you're living in now at the age of 10 won't be the world you live in when you turn 40. And therefore, you need to be educated to understand that the ever-changing world you live in, you can't be a victim. You gotta be a player in the change. You gotta be able to understand that in change, there are opportunities, there are potential. You can move forward and never let anyone tell you that because you are a girl, you can't dream big. Talent has no gender. Success has no gender. Nothing has gender unless we decide to. So for me, the SDG is part of my life since I was a kid. I learned to respect myself and to respect others. That's where everything started. You cannot ask for respect without respect for other people. 
You cannot make change in your life or in the life of people when you don't understand the agency of people that you're helping. Never come to help people with your ego. Come to help in humility. Listen to the people that you want to help. The solution lies with them, and together you work to find a solution that lasts forever. I'm here before you because I believe in a great deal of our shared humanity, our family of humanity. And nobody, and I believe that deep in my soul, has the right to decide what you should do or the decision you should make. In every mistake, there's something to learn. There's no success without failure. I learned this when I was a little kid. Never hold anyone accountable for my failure or success. But stand tall and challenge. As my father said, your brain is your ultimate weapon. Use it. Go out there. Doesn't matter the language the person speaks. There's no language for love, understanding, and getting together. So, that's I've been said. I will sing you a little song of thank you. Because where I come from, singing is in our DNA. There's not one country in Africa where we don't sing. Somebody give birth to a baby, bang, bang, bam, 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 we go. Somebody die, mm, 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 mm. You get married, mm. singing music is part of our DNA. And as we are all homo sapiens, we are African, and you understand that better than I do, isn't it? Okay, let's go for it. Blewe, blewe, blewe mi anda pelo, blewe mi anda pelo.